In exceptional circumstances where it's not feasible to meet policy requirements, planning obligations may be used to bring a development in line with policy objectives. One mechanism by which this may be achieved is through in lieu financial contributions. And the following questions that we're going to go through to, till the break uh, highlight some specific issues for discussion on in lieu payments. <coughs> Uh, in exceptional circumstances or where it's not feasible for registered social landlords to manage units, um, this is affordable housing units, due to their small number, payment to the council's affordable housing fund is accepted in lieu, on -site, in lieu of on-site or off-site affordable housing. Um, there's currently two rates of payments that apply in the city. And the question here is would you support a wider range of land value of different land value zones with payments in lieu sums reflecting these different values. So it's quite a specific question. Obviously, we'd take any sort of comments you may want to make against the in lieu payments for affordable housing. But what we're really saying is that at the moment, we only have two different settings, if you like, for what the, how the payments are calculated. And we're wondering if there's any support for a wider range of, of these, um, of these uh, payments. One mechanism could be to calculate based on land value, but you may have other suggestions. Lisa, just to clarify that, um, Margaret, do you want to expand on um, This is the current UDP policy, whereby we have um, just two, two rates. There's the normal rate, which applies across the city, and there's these uh, two higher value areas, which are basically uh, Mayfair and St. James's and Knightswood <coughs> and Belgravia, where we actually currently charge an extra 33%. Um, we are concerned that in some instances we're probably maybe charging too much, and in some, in some places charging far too little. Um, Therefore, we're, we're trying to make it more, um, just more closely related to the actual land values. And there's this um, proposal, if you put me on the other map, Sarah, um, of different land values. I know you can't really see the key from there, but basically the darker the shading indicates the higher value of land, and the lighter the shading, um, the lower the value of land. And so commuted sums... Uh, would be related to directly to the land value in those areas. So obviously you'd pay quite substantially a higher amount if you were in the very dark red zones as opposed to the paler pink or even white zones. And I should also say that we actually sometimes accept payments in lieu of actual just normal residential accommodation, which is a requirement of our mixed-use policy, if that or other... Um, mixed uses can't be provided on the site, so it has the, it would be used for those for both policies. Um, at the moment, the existing policy is quite simple, and therefore there's a lot of clarity and certainty for developers. Um, it doesn't seem to be broken at the moment. So I'm not quite sure why what fix you're trying to put here. Um, values, as you know, go up and down quite rapidly, and I think you might get yourself into a terrible muddle if you introduce too many layers of values where sites could overlap certain boundaries, for example, values going up and down on a yearly basis and planning schemes sometimes taking a couple of years to come to fruition from site acquisition, I think you could get yourselves into quite a muddle here. Thank you. Um, there's a gentleman down here. Before you answer that, I, mean, mm -hmm. I want to extend the point. I was going to say how... Sorry. Uh, how often are you going to keep those under review? Because, as the gentleman said there, land values change quite rapidly over time. Um, so if there's new uh, transport infrastructure or something, that obviously can have then have uh, an effect on, on, uh, on land value. Do you have any particular I, threshold I that you uh, think... but as the man said, y yeah. it strikes me that you could be potentially entering a very complicated and difficult sort of regulatory regime. OK, thank you. I mean, the key is on this, um, the exceptional circumstances there, I mean, viability. Do you just want to quickly go over what those might be? Because part of the landscape of what those exceptional circumstances might be, strikes me, will be on land values. Well, I mean, the policy says, um, that, and, and it's the same with the UDP policy, really, that um, affordable housing requirements should be provided on site unless it's either not practical to do so and to actually do so um, would affect the viability to the extent that the housing development wouldn't go ahead at all or if indeed the units 
are of such a small number, perhaps one, two or even three units, that no RSL is able to manage or take those, take those units on. In those circumstances, um, we might um, accept a payment in lieu, and particularly if, if that affordable housing cannot be provided um, elsewhere off-site. So those are the circumstances that we may well, um, we don't want to be too prescriptive because there are you know, a, a whole range of circumstances, but those are the two that would, would generally lead us to accept a payment in lieu instead. And, and as the current situation is um, that the, the amounts payable um, are updated annually according to land um, value price inflation, and that would uh, obviously continue. We do it on um, April the 1st every year. It gets updated.